Hi, welcome to the CertainTeed Right Way to Insulate training workshop. You know, before this house is completed, you're going to help make this a warm, comfortable, energy efficient place to live. You're going to add the most important building component that will make this house a home, insulation. And you're going to do it the right way with CertainTeed fiberglass insulation. Now today, we're going to look at insulating side walls with faced and unfaced bats, insulating on heated areas, and we'll show you the right way to insulate rooms with steel studs. You can insulate side walls with two types of fiberglass bats. The first type, faced insulation, has an attached vapor retarder. The second type, unfaced insulation, is installed then covered with a separate vapor retarder, such as polyethylene plastic film. Your supervisor will tell you which is the most common for your area, but you should know both methods. A vapor retarder is important and will help avoid moisture problems when this home is completed. Remember, most vapor retarders are flammable and should always be covered. First, our professional installer is using craft-faced bats, but before he started, he carefully read the instructions and cautions set out on the product package and made sure he had all the right tools, a staple hammer and enough staples to last the day, a knife and extra blades, waterproof tape, a putty knife or screwdriver for chinking, of course, a disposable dust respirator, safety glasses and gloves and some twine for bundling scrap when the job is done. Before you open the bags, check the labels to be sure you have the correct product. Wall cavities usually take 93 inch bats. Certain Teed also makes 105 inch bats for 9 foot high walls. First, you'll open a bundle of bat packages. As we said previously in the Getting Started video, be sure to open the packages correctly. It's a good idea to space bats on the floor around the wall so you don't have to keep walking back and forth for each bat. To install, hold the bat at one end with the facing toward the interior of the room and firmly place it in the top of the wall cavity. Be sure it's flush to the top with no gap. Then, place it gently into the cavity, making sure not to compress the insulation. Tug at the bottom of the bat to smooth out the facing, and be sure there's no gap at the bottom. Some installers prefer to install all the bats this way, and then go back and staple all of the flanges after they've finished a room, and some installers prefer to staple as they go. Choose a method that works best for you. Occasionally, bats may be a bit too long or too short to fit the cavity. In these cases, cut longer bats to fit, or use a short piece to add to the length. There are two ways to staple, and you should know both. These flanges here can be stapled to the studs inside the cavity, and that's called inset stapling. Or the flanges can be stapled over the face of the studs, and that's called face stapling. We'll look at the most common method, inset stapling, first. Staple at least every 8 inches or so, and wherever the bat extends out from the stud. Make sure the bat fits snugly in the cavity. You don't want any gaps. Every gap causes heat loss and will cost the homeowner more in fuel bills. Try to use whole single bats, but if you must use short lengths, make sure you butt them snugly together. The bats will fit neatly between the studs, except at the corners and other areas where you'll have a narrower or uneven space. Cut the bat to fit, like this. Note the small guidelines to help you cut straight. It's a good idea to leave a flange on one side if you can. Most experienced installers cut against a stud like this but you might find it easier to measure and cut on the floor like this with the facing down. Never cut against finished flooring. There are two ways to staple the flanges to the studs. Inset as we've seen or face stapling like this. 
The right way to install bats by face stapling is to overlap the flanges like this. The most common practice is inset stapling. The flanges fold into the cavity. This makes it easier for the drywall installers to do their job. Some drywall is installed with adhesive, and when that's the case, be sure your flanges don't extend over the studs where the adhesive will be placed. When you come to a cavity that has plumbing, wiring, or electrical boxes, or ducts, be sure to insulate behind and around them. For wiring, you can split the insulation and push one half behind the wire, or you can cut a slit to fit around it. For plumbing, you must run the insulation behind the pipes to keep them from freezing. Be sure to insulate behind every pipe on outside walls. In colder climates, uninsulated pipes may freeze. Cut out around electrical boxes and stuff the piece behind the box. Insulate behind air ducts if there's space and stuff insulation around them on the sides and at the bottom where they come into the wall. Look around the room for unfilled cavities. Cut pieces to fit and fill the cavities. With narrow pieces, you can either tape the cut side or cut the facing into tabs and staple the tabs. Don't forget areas like band joists in basements and between floors. Also, use scrap material to chink insulation into narrow openings around doors and windows. Then look around for any tears in the vapor retarder and tape them with waterproof tape. Here's a neat, well-insulated room.